Hello, everyone. Hello. Happy Monday. I'm going to paint some ornaments today. I think it'll be fun. It won't be as ambitious as the last two segments that were a little bit uh, longer and um, more detailed, but we had fun with them. So hello, hello. Say hi when you come on. Um, I'm so happy to be here to paint with you again today. And I'm going to do some ornaments and uh, these, these wood slices. So anyways, how is everybody doing? Everybody getting in the holiday spirit? I've finally finished all my decorations. I got a really cool big snowman for the front yard. So it's beginning to feel like Christmas. And I'm painting some Christmas things, which is kind of fun, which I love. I think we'll do some snowman on the little wooden, uh, like the little wooden slices. I love painting snowman with different color backgrounds too. Hey, Michelle. Hello, my friend. Um, and I do, do love teal, as you guys know. So I'm going to paint some snowmen on here. I don't know what color to do this one. But Michelle, I'm going to show everybody the great find from M Michael's yesterday. And uh, Michelle and I are both going to paint some. So you guys, let me um, switch this around a little bit so you can see. So I was at Michael's yesterday and you know, everything has been on sale. Hey, Cecile. And I had my eye on these really huge nutcrackers already. Um, they're pretty tall. Look at, they're tall. And um, I love nutcrackers. And they were really cool. And they were on sale for the 60% off during the big sale last weekend. But buy one, get three free. So that was practically like, how could I leave that behind? So I've got four of my nutcrackers. These are the two styles. And Michelle's going to, I'm going to give Michelle one. And I love them. They're so cute. And I didn't dare try to paint one today because it 45 minutes would be a little hard. Um, yeah, so they had little ones. They had different sizes, but they were buy one, get three free. So I thought it would be fiscally irresponsible if I did not purchase them. So there they are. And I think I'm going to do mine, Michelle, in like the tealy pink colors as I'm uh, hooked on lately. Good morning, Deborah. Um, and I saw De I saw your uh, painting this morning of the snowman, and I just loved it. It was so darn cute. So that was a great thing. I didn't catch everybody this morning, but I caught yours, and then I caught Debbie's before me with those fabulous ideas for gifts. I mean, what a great idea. I at this point in the year, you do need lots of little gifts for, you know, the mailman and hostess gifts and teacher gifts and bus driver gifts and those little kits and the little things she put together with the bird seed and the, the gingerbread mix and whatnot. If you didn't see her, she was right before me. Go back and look because her um, ideas are fabulous. Nancy from Michigan. Michelle, they were practically free. So the nutcrack is I will keep you posted as I paint them because I'm dying to paint them. Good painting, like I said, a lot of holiday stuff. I'm going to do these little wood slices. I got a great deal, I was telling Michelle, too, because Michelle lives not too far. And um, and Michelle, Deb, that was before me, lives in Groveland, and you're not too far. Deb's, uh, Michelle's in Claremont, and, and we should all get together soon. Hi, Denise. Good to see you. Um, so these little wood slices I got at, there's an Amazon hut bin store that just opened here in Lakeland. I think it's like they go in and probably buy pallet loads of returned Amazon things. And things are in boxes. So a lot of times you don't know what's in them and you can kind of see what it says on the side. And it's really big. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. So I found these, I found lots of good stuff last time. It was $12 a day. So every day it's a different price. So as the week goes on, the price goes down. So I found these $12 a day sounds kind of high because Tuesdays is $2 a day, but you never know what you're going to find. So I found these, I'm going to switch over because you don't need me anymore. I found these and of course you could easily tell what they were. And it's a big box of like 30 of these little slices with some little, actually, I didn't even look twice at the stencils. I don't even know what's on there. Um, so I'm going to paint some of those today. Came with a little twine for, uh, to hang them, which I may use, or maybe I'll use some more of a glittery, uh, twine or ribbon or something. But I thought it would be fun to paint these today because they're small. You can see them. Um, you might have seen my big Santa I did. And then on the Away in a Manger on Friday, I tackled a, a, a painting of the three wise men. And it, I do love how it came out. But it was a little bit um, touch and go doing it so quickly in our 45-minute segment. But you will see that on the page, the rerun, the rerun, the rerun, the recording of that. Hey, Fatima, love seeing all you guys pop on. Thank you so much. I know it's Monday and it's, um, you know, it, it's the afternoon. But it's great to see so many people turn up. So these were just the wood slices. 
I put a coat of gesso on here just to, um, you know, so that the paint doesn't sink into the wood too much. Coat of gesso. I gave it a fine sand when the gesso was dry. And then I put on the color. Um, oh, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Um, I didn't love them at first, but then I did touch them up a little afterwards. And actually, I was pretty happy. Um, I did a whole nativity scene last year um, in my art membership, which I think I did show you guys. So I wanted to do something a little different that wasn't that whole big scene. Um, of course, it'll be the last thing I find here. I think I did show it to you, the nativity, the whole nativity scene. Oh, it's right here. So this was a fun painting, but of course not a 45 minute painting, but I loved the idea of the can. I love the camels. So the, the wise men and the camels, and it was a little easy because it wasn't like you were really painting portraits of people. You had a tiny little face and then they had all the drapey clothes and it was really cool. So thank you guys. It was fun. So here I'm at the gesso and sanded, and now I'm painting a color on top and I'll put my snowman on top. Don't know about this. Suggestions on that color. Hey, hey, other Cheryl. Hello. Thanks for being here again. And so I'm putting a quick second coat. I want a nice covering of paint. Sometimes if I'm doing something with this blue and it's see-through like that, I don't mind because it kind of looks like sky through. It would be fine if we left it. But especially for the teal and the red, I do want to have the background um, pretty solid and not that uh, not streaky at all. I encourage you all to ask questions and chat amongst yourselves even. I'd love to see the engagement. Um, that helps us as creators just for you to make a comment, say hello, send an emoji. It is really helpful to all of us. And I encourage you if you are not following Craft Around the Clock, which is today is my segment. I try to do them on Mondays. To take a look because it's live crafting every 45 minutes all of the weekdays and, and lots of fun events on weekends. Uh, I get so many great ideas. I just love the uh, diversity of the crafts and the painting and everything. So do, if you are one of my Tinker's Cart peeps, do um, take a look and give a follow over to Craft Around the Clock. And I would also love it if you gave me a follow. I um, am always painting something. And it's just a fun, it's just fun for me to paint and have you guys here with me. It's like painting with my friends. It is painting with my friends. Hello, hello. Um, oh, I was going to show you a little bit. Let me do this blue and then we'll think about this one. Even if we just do three, that's okay. Oh, you know what I think I want to do is a pink background. Like I said, I'm in the pink te teal thing lately. I'm going to do one pink. And I'm simply going to sketch a little simple snowman in chalk. Chalk is fabulous to adjust things on your paintings or just to sketch because unlike pencil, um, it wipes right away. So if you don't like something, you can wipe it away and start again. Thanks, Michelle. It's always fun. I'll show you what I was painting this morning. I was, um, I'm was, i getting ready to bring some things to a shop uh, near me here in Florida. And I also, Michelle and I, are vending at an art event in a few weeks, so we're both frantically trying to paint things for them. Michelle, I painted some glasses. I did um, some glasses this morning just because we're in Florida and I thought palm trees and uh, it's hard to see because there's so much going on underneath it in the glass, but they were really fun and quick. I don't know whether to write something on them or just leave them like this. And I was lucky because I found the some nice glasses at the Dollar Tree, so they weren't too pricey. I paint them just with the, um, you can use folk art, you can use whatever brand, but as long as it's the multi-surface paint. And then when they're dry, I bake them in the oven per the directions on the bottles. And they really are, um, that paint is on there. You're not gonna wash it off or, or worry about it coming off. So if you wanna paint some glasses for gifts, those are great gifts too. Um, I know as teachers and different bus drivers and that sort of thing, I know they get an awful lot of coffee mugs maybe a wine glass, because even if you're not a wine drinker, you could certainly drink your favorite beverage out of it. Uh, wine glasses are fun to paint too. Let me find a pink for that. I want to do that pink. Um, and I have some little samples. I The other day for our, in my art membership once a month, we paint together um, a lot, but once a month we do a very casual session where it's more chit-chatting and connecting, and I will demo a quick 
something. And this last time we did little snowmen, snowmen faces. So I have the very simple, and that's what we're going to paint, some very simple snowmen on there. These are a little large. I know they have the smaller little slices. Hi, Tanya. Facebook user, my friend, call when you get a chance. I would love to, but I don't see your name. So if you grant StreamYard per permission, I will see your name when you comment. But if not, just put it in there. I have a feeling I know who it is. But uh, anyway, um, so what was I saying? I forget. It'll come to me. Lots of things on my mind these days. Um, oh, the smaller little slices are more um, apt. You could just put the face of the snowman on. You could put on these. They're a little big. But I do paint on the small ones. This is the first time I've seen these slices this big. It was just that little Amazon find. That Amazon store find. I do too, Michelle. I can't wait to see what you do with yours. Um, cool. Hi, Sue. Thank you. Um, oh, Lori, I knew it was you. I thought it was you. And I, I just didn't, just in case. But yes, I will, because I would love to get together. Are you back from Mass? How, and Matt, Lori just traveled back to our uh, high school for a little reunion. I'm sad I didn't make it. Um, but I'm dying to hear how it went. Lori and I went to middle school. We went to grade school maybe too, didn't we? We um, have known each other for many years. And she's artistic as well. And we were all in the commercial art program at our vocational high school. So we, um, and, and Lori's just moved from Mass. You're in North or South Carolina. You're in one of those now. Are they four inch, Pam? Let's look. Yeah, like four and a quarter, but yeah, four inches and then a little bit of the bark sort of uh, adds a little to it. So I really did just do a, a coat of gesso there and then sand it and now I'll do my the color. Yes, I know. I, I, I love snowmen too. I think they're really versatile and fun. You can make them Christmassy, but you can make them, I may do some like, you know, how we could see them on the beach in the paintings with the palm trees. I may do that since I'm here in Florida. We will see. Okay, let's sketch on the dry ones. I'm not going to do them as just big snowman heads, but I do a, a couple of different ways. Sometimes I give them the little, you know, the typical three balls, like for the body. I sit them on a little snow. I'll probably spatter them after with some snow. So that's you don't need much more. You can sketch a little hat on. I'm going by um, some reference photos of all snowmen I've painted over the years. And I really do love sometimes to give them like a stocking cap that's kind of blowing in the wind. I think I'll do that. I'll freehand the arms and the scarfs and all those things. Yes, yeah, South Carolina. Since grade school, I know it. I, I just, and then George, who popped in sometimes, our friend George Hall. I met George be practically before school almost because we went to school from from young, young grades. Um, so we're gonna put another one here, and this is nice with the blue uh, dark background, like the night sky. And sometimes these I just painted, they're a little wet, red, wet when it's dry. Sometimes I make the body more of just like a shape like that with the little head. And I always lots of times, always lots of times, most times, have them looking up. Sometimes you have them looking forward, the snowman, the nose, the carrot nose kind of wonky, but uh, this guy I'm going to have looking up and he might have a little top hat. And let's just let this dry a second because I can even freehand that on. So let's just do four little ornaments. I always base coat my snowman in a blue gray. You can see here. First of all, it gives me good coverage over these colors. And then I'll highlight with white, but leaving some of that blue showing, and it just forms shadows. So I never start my snowman, or if I'm just painting snow on the ground for that matter, in just white. I know it's white, but if I start it in blue, it gives me an opportunity to leave some areas that create shadows, and that saves me painting those. And let's see, you guys. I'm looking for comments or questions. I come back even later on and answer any if you have them later. So if you're watching the recording later on, Feel free to comment or ask a question if you need to. I'm going to just base coat my snowman, like I said, with like a blue-gray. I have paint gray. That's kind of a blue-gray. You can just take some blue and black. Whatever you have for colors, just mix them up and see what you get. And I don't want it too dark, but I want you to be able to 
So see, it is kind of just a bluish gray. And I don't like to use just a gray because it's just very dull. I always use blue, no matter what I'm painting. If I'm painting anything at all that is gray, I'm going to get a little smaller brush here. Um, I, I use blue in my gray all the time. It just adds a little bit of color to something. And if it's just black and white for your gray, it's pretty dull. So let's just get this guy filled in. And I don't have to follow. I don't have to be a slave to my... Uh, chalk lines. They erase so easily. I'm just going to eyeball the shape and get the shape I want. And if it covers the chalk line, great. If not, not a problem. Hey, Pat from cloudy Georgia. Yeah, it's actually blue sky. Cloudy here, but blue skies, which is nice. Hello, Deborah. Thank you guys for popping in and watching um, anything with me. So I love it. I love it. It's it's things I would be painting anyway, and to have some company while I paint is the best thing. So let me know who's painters here, who's more crafty. You can incorporate painting in your crafting, and I'm here to help you get started. If you're a little apprehensive about painting, it's super easy. I make it super easy for you. Look at how easy that is. It's kind of a square head, but that's all right. So I'm going to just quickly base coat all my bodies of my snowman. And again, you could paint it as just a big snowman's head if you wanted. That is fun too sometimes. I'm going to add a little water to my paint. It's a little thicker and the um, it's absorbing into the background. So I thin my paint down as I need to. Just a few drops of water as I go. Hi, Cindy from Cindy's Creations and um, Sandy from Indiana. Hello, hello. Thank you for popping in. Let me know what you like to create. It doesn't have to be painting. And I love it if you share your creations. I um, Even if it's not a painted thing, it could be any sort of a craft. I'd love to see what you're all working on. We all, we all network and give each other ideas and cheer each other on. And it's a great to do that. Alrighty. Can't wait to see what we have in store. I've caught some of the crafters today already, and we have a whole day ahead of us. And sometimes, even if I'm like I was painting my glasses and I was just listening to the other crafters, you don't have to always be painting along. Or I, sometimes it's just having it in the background is nice. It feels like I'm just part of the community and I'm hanging out with my friends. You know what, I do want to put a little snow underneath them so they're just not floating, free floating like that. So I would usually just put a little bit of a, of a little bit of a, like a little snow bank or something under them. I'm sort of being shy of the edge of the wood. I kind of like to have a little border of the natural wood showing through. It's not important. It's not something you have to do. I probably will hit it a little bit when I'm Putting the white of my snow on or when I'm spattering, but just love the, the natural edge with the with the wood um, bark there too. Great gifts. On the back, you could personalize it. It's for you if to whoever it's for. Date it. They will treasure it. My favorite, favorite um, ornaments are gifted ornaments, especially handmade ones. We all really appreciate that, I'm sure. Whether you're creative or not, I think you you appreciate that. So Sandy, yeah, you dabble a lot. I dabble in things too, mostly painting, but I do love to, uh, when I see some of the creators here do something cool and interesting, I love to give it a try. Um, oh, Sue, same. I started as an uh, oil painter when I was just very young taking oil painting lessons. Um, Lori, I don't know if you remember, and I was trying to think of the the name of it, because someone on the Hudson, we grew up in Hudson, Mass., and someone posted a beautiful painting, a plein air painting they did downtown. Everyone was talking about what stores used to be here and there. But there was a paint and wallpaper store, of all things, downtown. And my mother signed my brother and I up for oil painting classes, and I bet we were only like 9 and 10. I We both loved it. Um, my brother, who saves everything, still has his painting, of course. Um, I do not. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. He has his. Um, he has everything that he's ever had. Anyway, um, so I do love to this day oil painting. I am a big plein air painter, which is painting outdoors. I always worked in oils outdoors. 
but I have switched over to acrylics this summer myself. Um, so, so I do a lot of uh, saying acrylic in watercolor. Now it's just a little easier sometimes. It dries a lot, a lot faster than my oil, so I have to make up for that. And you'll see little techniques that I do when I'm painting in my acrylics to make it seem, make it them behave a little like oils. Painting quickly, blending. And when I'm plein air painting, it is a little issue sometimes, but I use like a stay wet palette. I use extender in my paint. I'm making it work. It's just a little easier when I'm outside uh, to clean up and not have to. When I'm traveling, I would always have to like find a place to buy my turps when I was, you know, wherever I was traveling. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to do it with acrylics. Okay, so this is the base coat for our snowmen. Blue gray, that's all we're starting with. Hello, Cynthia, welcome. Um, we started at 12.15, we end up at 1. I'll watch the clock. These guys are pretty quick. Um, oh, I wanted to put a little snow on this one. They look kind of like ghosts or something now. All right, so now they're all done. And if there's chalk peeking through, look, at you can just kind of erase that. And I'm going to get um, white paint now. And I kind of decide, let's just say on the, the right side, I'll leave my shadow and I'll have them brighter on the front of the snowman whiter say there's a light source coming over from the left maybe but i'll just take i'm sort of just kind of loading my brush on one side a little heavier uh with the paint on one side usually i will say don't just plop onto your piece now you have too much paint on there but for the snowman i like the texture of it and i like it to be sort of thick you could go a nice smooth stroke if you wish or you could kind of pat it and make it a little more snow textured you could also go in with a um, modeling paste or a snow texture, you know, the snow texture stuff uh, and put that on if you want to get texture. I'm going to paint these. I'm going to leave them, but I think I will take a little glitter uh, paint and put that over. Thank you, Vicki. Um, thank you for sharing and sprinkling. It's so appreciated. Uh, thank you so much. And I would love it. Like I said, if you guys go ahead and give a follow to Craft Around the Clock. And also, if you are not following me on Tinker's Cart Art, simple just click up above and, and give me a follow i would so appreciate that and then you can see what i'm doing when i'm doing it the projects that are there and see already how he's got some dimension i don't want to paint him all white same with the little snow bank underneath them look i'm just going to go right across the top with that heavy white and then i just sort of smooth it out because i want it to have a little bit of a soft blend and already because this uh, white highlight is right in front of my snowman. We've got the shadow here. Doesn't it bring it forward? So now it's you can tell my snowman is sitting on that a little behind that. And if it's too gray, you can just go back in and work your white over a little bit if he needs to be. I usually have to go in and brighten him up a few times. Let the paint dry. It sinks in a little bit. If you wanted, if you had a kind of a brush that was textured, you could tap it and get that snow texture on there. Kind of like that. But I do have to go back and brighten it up a little. So let's let that one dry. Oh, hey, Sue, living a heartfelt life. Thank you. I like a heartful life. Please, if you guys are creators, please put your business pages down and uh, do give our creators follows and see the diverse, wonderful types of crafting there is in painting and artistry out there. So same thing. I'm just loading that brush. And then kind of bringing it in. And I'll do a few so that you can see the process. And then I let it dry and I go back and I get it a little bit more coverage as I need to. And I'm reloading. I know you can't really see my palette, but I do like you to see the palette. Let me pull it over. Um, so I'm taking the corner of the brush right into the white. Give it a little pat. And just to that bright white to the side I want the highlight on. That's the left here. And same thing down here. I just kind of go right along right in front. I can go back when I need to and soften that. Sometimes one stroke it works and sometimes you go back and soften. And I'm going to do the same thing quickly on the other guys and then we're going to zoom in and I'm going to show you how to get all the little detail now that you kind of got your idea for your body here. You don't have to do them all. They're all done sort of the same way. But you get an idea what the colors are going to look like. I do love the snowman on the red background too. So experiment. Use whatever color is your favorite. This is exactly what we did already. I'll do it one quick more time. Paint's on there. You don't want to leave it solid stripes like that. You want to pat it down. Pam, 
nice to see you guys all here. And I love that you all know each other. And like I said, I'd love to see you chatting, chit chatting there amongst yourselves while we're painting. This is what it's all about is the community. So there, so I've got pretty well down. You guys have seen how the body gets started of the snowman. So let's scooch back over because I love the teal and get some features and things. If you think he needs a little brighter white, go right ahead. And I'll get him white. I'm going to grab that glitter too so I can show you what that looks like. Um, and I, I know you've seen it before. And um, there goes my brush and my paint. The twinkles. It's nice because it's not the uh, powdered glitter that goes everywhere. It's in a binder and you paint it on. And it, so it turns kind of clear. And then the glitter shows. Cecile, I think I will try to. It, I probably will have to just go live on my page. It's going to take a little longer. Um, if not, I video as I go, and then I'll split the video up so it's uh, it's doable. I think what I'm going to do to start that is just spray it with some primer. Um, I usually spray like a gray, just a primer, just a rust oleum or something on my metal pieces and whatnot before I paint them. But I was thinking to myself, all those nooks and crannies on there, to get a couple coats of paint, because I put the paint on the wood, like I did here with the gesso, for instance, it sort of um, gives me like a little better surface to paint on. I can sand it and I get the burr of the wood down. I think if I spray the nutcracker with the primer and then give it a sand, I can probably jump into painting a little quicker. So if you guys didn't, are just jumping on, there was a great, there's a great um, sale on for the wooden nutcrackers to paint at Michael's buy one, get three free, which is just crazy town. But yeah, I think I will do on um, that live. Okay, so we're going to do our little features. So on any of these, as you would go, let's just do this one so you can see. I, you, you can put your black top hat on, which is great. I use that too, but sometimes I love to just put a little stocking hat that is sort of sitting on their head and then trailing away in the wind. It's a little hard for the pink to cover. The craft acrylic paints don't cover as well. I could have painted this white first, but let's just let that dry and then we can go ahead and put a few more coats. Or even if I add a little white to this pink, it gets a little more opaque. And now we need a color for our scarf. So let's see, maybe kind of, I need mean, things that go with the pastels. Um, maybe a little bit of a, a purpley it's like a purpley pink let's try that so i just paint in the hats the scarves the whatnot just with the solid color to start and then i will worry about shading and highlighting in a little bit yeah do uh, because it was a great sale um so i've just got a little scarf there and then i usually just put a little dot so that's like a little bit of a knot and then you can just sort of if you use your flat brush on the chisel edge to start you get that thinner line and then you can just open it up and get it a little thicker. So however you want your little scarf, but see how putting the wiggles in gives it a little movement. It's a little kind of a fun touch. And then we need some arms with just a liner or just a flat brush. And then get a little bit of brown out. Michelle and I painted a really fun purple snowman. If you see, look on my page, you'll see it. Um, Whoever's a painter here, a decorative painter, you know Donna Dewberry and her one-stroke method. She's like the queen of the one-stroke method. And she's been around for many years. She has multiple books out and videos. She has a YouTube channel, and you should take a look because she has some fabulous, beautiful paintings. Um, and she lives nearby, and Michelle goes to her classes. So I was lucky enough to go on Saturday. It was like a Christmas party. We painted. We had a gift exchange. It was so much fun, and I painted this fabulous little purple snow lady. So take a look because that was so cool. Little stick arms, super easy. You don't have to even do much shading on them. I'm just going to put a little snow on it after, so that's all you need on something this tiny. Uh, an orange nose. Let's get the orange paint. I usually have my paint out before I start, but I was so into those glasses this morning. It was like I waited till the very last minute to hop on. Um, but I did get about how many? Eight glasses. They go quick. They're almost the little glasses I was showing. They, you can almost do them like a little bit production style, and then you have a lot of gifts. And you know what I just thought of? 
with a Christmas scene or a snowman. And if you filled it with the little uh, black and white peppermint candies, what a great gift that is. Uh, a little nose. So sometimes I like to kind of point it up a little so they're kind of looking up. Did you see how I did that in one stroke? Let me show you. Thank you, Donna Dewberry. Anyways, she, I, I studied years and years ago through her books and everything and uh, painting the roses and whatnot. And I used to work for a furniture company painting all of their furniture. So I would do those kind of with my eyes closed. But it's a lot you can do with your brush and brush strokes. So instead of painting the little um, nose and filling it all in, you can just take a brush. You can just press. I'm pressing that down. And I'm just kind of wiggling it. But as I take pressure off the brush, I get a nice little nose shape. Super easy, fun to practice, press, pull, and just get a nose. And even if I'm painting a bigger snowman, instead of filling it all in, I will do that. I'll get a bigger brush and do the same thing. I may even do it with a flat brush, but that's a perfect way to do it. Sometimes I give them little mouths um, like this. Sometimes I give them little smiles. There's different ways to paint them. Actually, you can see on my little sample. So sometimes I paint it as a little mouth. I a lot of times like to use just a little O shape, a little oval. And it looks like they're singing or hopefully not yelling, but singing. Um, cute little expressions you can get. I don't do really fancy eyes like that on tiny things. But I, you can do almost like a little dot with a little blue in there or simply just a little dot with the back end of your brush, depending on the size of your little guys. These are teeny. We haven't room here to be... be um, making too much to the eye. So I just dot them on, which actually a toothpick, um, a stylus. If you have trouble making little perfect dots, use that. I like to make their little buttons the same way. Again, if they were bigger snowmen and bigger buttons, I would make the little holes or little cross hatching so it looks like a real sewn on button. Nadia from Nadia's Crafty Corner. Welcome. So good that you're here. Thank you guys. Um, and his mouth. Oh, so I'm going to give a little O mouth to this one. And now I'm going to do second coat of my scarf and my um, hat. So I used the purple for the scarf. And then you can get, is you can put polka dots, stripes, you can get plaid, you can do fancy little things on your accessories. Sometimes I put mittens on the end of their little stick arms. Um, I did not this time, but we could on another one. I want to finish this one up so you can see it before I go to the others because I really want you to see the whole process. Your finger, a wet, damp brush, takes away the chalk lines. They bug me, so I kind of can't wait to get them off there. And the hat. Let me make, this is the pink. I'm going to add a little white to it. I want to have a little bit lighter pink maybe and maybe leave the brim of the cuff of the knit hat a little darker. So I'm going to go along. And see how well that pink covers now that we have one coat, but adding the white to the whole mix is really what makes it a little more coverage. And I do want to shade a little bit and highlight to give that form. I know it's just a little hat, but if I just take my brush again, like we did before, a little bit of white on one bit, I do pat it off here because I don't want it thick like the snow. And then around the top edge, say I want it to be a little bit lighter. There, I've got a little bit of a highlight. It's a little darker underneath, which is what I want. It does need a little bit of a second coat because it is a little bit see-through. I can see the teal through there a little bit. And my hat is pretty wet, so I have time to kind of blend it a little. It's a little heavier than I'd like here, but I don't think that matters. And I want it a little bit darker, so I'll take a little red into my pink maybe. And I'm just gonna make a little cuff here. And I think with that color, I will take a little brush and get a little bit of a pom-pom on the end with like a little, what do they call them? What do they call these little pom-poms with the, I'm losing my, my I'm losing my, um, my words like Deb with the filter. I kept, same way when you're here, you're like, what is that called to get a little fringe or what are these little pom-poms called? It's like a little pom-pom ball and it has that little fringe on there. Maybe it is pom-poms, but so I just gave it like a little pom-pom there. Tassel, Cecile, that's exactly it. I knew I knew the word was there somewhere. All righty. Even though it's a little tiny snowman, if it's a person or an animal or anything that needs a little highlight in the eye, teeniest little white highlight. 
but always on the same side. So if you start and say putting that little dot on the, like say at one o'clock or two o'clock, do the same on the other one. If you do like 11 o'clock and then one o'clock and you've got um, Marty Feldman snowman. So we don't want that. I'm going to just put a little snow on the branch, like snow's falling, which it will be when we spatter it. And we'll just here and there, just little bits of snow so that it looks like it's snow on it. If it was a top hat on this guy, I would probably put snow on the top of the top hat and kind of drape it down a little bit too. Uh, so now I can put some little decorative touches on the hat. I, when I'm doing little bits of detail work like this, I do add water to my paint and thin it down because it's been sitting out, it's thin. And if I'm doing some little fine lines, I would like to just have it a little bit thin so I can go right along and do all the strokes at one time. They're just little lines. Can you see how I sort of curved them with the shape of that little hat band? So I started a little curve into the left, kind of a little straight in the middle, curve to the right. And this tiny little guy, it's not important, but if it was a big um, snowman and you had that detail, you'd want to kind of go with the shape. I need a little bit of a shadow now behind that little band. So I just need something darker. I want to maybe do like a maroon. So my red with the tiniest bit of black, just a scooch, gives me a nice maroon. Because I think the, I think the straight pink and, and even the pink with the red is not dark enough. So I'm going to just, again, load that brush with just a little bit of the dark on the left side of my brush. I know it's hard to see there. And if I just go behind the band a little bit, maybe at the bottom edge of that hat because it is a little darker. I know I overshot shot the color there. It's hard when you're doing the, the one stroke like that. But look, at just a little bit of uh, water on my brush, and I can scooch that away. I know you're kind of far away. Let me bring it up. It needs a little bit of finessing, so I might just brush it a little bit. And then I might put polka dots on the hat, or I could just leave it like that. For the scarf, same thing. I do, even though it's little, I do give it a little highlighting and some shading. So I need a little darker shade than that pinky purple we use. So maybe a little of that with some blue, maybe the tiniest touch of black. I just want a dark shade, a little darker than the shade of the scarf. Cecilia, I love snowmen. Snowmen are so fun to paint. Snowmen and Santas, I'm all about it this time of year. So where would we need a shadow? Like with a little, um, I'll hold it up. So where the little knot is here and the little ties come out, it's a little shadow. There's a little shadow here or under that knot. Maybe on this side, I'll do a shadow. And as the little uh, end of the scarf you know, there would be a little dark in places maybe, and then a little light as they twist and turn. So I've just thrown in a little dark here and there. But now when we do the light, then that really pops. And I think I'll just mix the same color we used with a little white to get a light. Get a little lighter shade of what we were doing there. But I do like to... Um, I'm washing my brush off in between because I just want to grab it on the corner of the brush and do it like a little side load. So that's why I'm rinsing that brush off. A lot of times I'll just go from color to color if I'm going to a darker color. And I know I want this little knot to sort of have a highlight. And some of the scarf maybe in the middle. This would be a little highlighted in the middle here. I'm looking at that shadow looks a little dark to me, you know, but and then I, not like I alternate and stripe it, stripe the scarf with lights and dark, but it does help it make it look like it's kind of moving. I'm going to lighten that. That little dark there is just going to bug me. It's just a little too dark. So I'm going to just lighten that a little bit. I like to put stripes on my scarves too. I like to give a lot of little decorative touches. So I might just take my little stylus first and just give my hat some polka dots because any extra detail are just part of the fun. Anybody like anybody else like painting snowmen? They're pretty quick and easy for little ornaments and things. Second coats, if you think you need it, like, oh, I might want this little stripes to be a little brighter white. Because of the acrylics, they're just a little transparent. Just be patient and go back a second time if you feel like you need to. 
arms. The little buttons are a little small to kind of do a little X in, but let me try really teeny. Stripes on my scarf. Sometimes if it's a big scarf, you can get fancy and do stripes of different colors and then horizontal and then vertical, and it looks a little like a plaid. If you go along with some little broken up lines too, it really makes it look like plaid. Hi, Mary, thank you. Um, I like to do like different expressions on their faces too and different things. I mean, this is kind of my standby, but I do like to do all different uh, expressions. And if I go back along the end with just some little dots of the pink and I could go ahead and make tassels. <laughs> so again, little tiny bits. Um, I don't want to get overdone with the details because it's tiny, but you do want to get a little bit of detail on there. I might even take the tiny bit of white on my brush just to give them a little highlight, a little dab in there. And some little stripes. Like I said, I do love stripes. Um, what else? You could put hearts. Hearts are super easy to make if you want to just to add a little detail to something. Look at how easy you can do a heart with your little brush. Just press and press and just little strokes. Very cute. Actually, I do Valentine snowmen, and he would be a good. This one would be good on the pink. A little Valentine snowman. Just use some pinks and reds, and then you can use little hearts. You could put a little heart right on his chest. On any of them, it doesn't even have to be. Um, a Valentine snowman. It could just be your snowman. And a lot of times too, I give him a little bit of a rosy cheek. If I get this little tiny bit of, not very pink, but I sometimes we'll take just a little bit of pink and put a little. Give them a little rosy cheek there. Mostly on one side is all you see. It's pretty light there, I know. Um, but I don't want it to look like, you know, remember that puppet or madam or on the, what was that, Hollywood Square show? I'm probably, I'm way too old. You guys are probably won't even remember that. But um, remember madam had those bright red cheeks. I don't want him too bright. If he was bigger, you could do a few little eyelashes or something too. But he's very small. Um Something on my, so I'm going to do, what do I want? Stripes I have on the hat. I'll just do stripes, but maybe I'll just do them like a like at an angle. Maybe a kind of a blobby stripe there. And then I make sure it's a different angle, like on the knot, so it's not looking like the scarf is going straight over. And then I kind of do a different angle again on the tails. I cannot believe we have three minutes left. That's crazy. How could the time go by so fast? But I like the subtle colors with the teal background here. I like to spatter my snowman with a old toothbrush to make it snowing. I do this for a lot of winter scenes or simply for night skies. So if you're doing it as a night sky, you want to paint just your sky, do all your spattering, then paint the rest of your painting. Um, snowman you want to do on top of everything because there's snow everywhere. And it's just a matter of taking a little bit. I don't want it to get pink pink in my red. So I get a little red, uh, a little white there. I've, I've wet my toothbrush. Now, how much water you have in your toothbrush will determine like if it's really big splotches or little. Sometimes it's too dry and it's just... So tiny spatters, you don't see them. So play around with it and cover other things up. My computer is full of spatters. And then I just spatter snow. This is my favorite part of the whole painting, is putting the snow on. Right over the whole thing. And if there's a part you don't like, you just put extra spatters. Sometimes they blob and run. And if you have something you don't like, just a wet brush, you can pull it right out. But look at how cute is already how simple you could paint a whole bunch of these in a row and have some great gifts oh adrian thank you i'm never sure what time is a good time to go on so i'm usually on in the morning or early afternoon just because i want i'd rather do it during the day the light's better for me and by the time nighttime comes i'm just ready to like curl up on the couch or something i'm just not much of a night owl so I didn't think we would have time for all of them, but I'm going to paint them all, and I will show you pictures of them. But I love the way they came out. I think they're really fun. Um, and again, we'll, uh, the recording will be up. If you have any questions while you're painting, I'm here to answer them. 
Was there anything else I was going to show you? I will, because we have exactly a minute, maybe. And in my art membership, this is what we're painting this afternoon, a little snow globe. I love this because it can be personalized. Um, I paint, like I said, with my members live twice a month. Today's one of my lives, and then I get two recordings every month. So I'm going to hop off. Oh, this is my upside down polar bear. I'm going to hop off now because it is time for the next crafter. So refresh your page here on Craft Around the Clock. In a few minutes, in a minute or two, refresh your page and you'll see the new creator and it's Robin's um, Originals. So stay tuned for Robin's Originals. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.